Oh, man. Mitch Marner finally scores a goal for the Toronto Maple Leafs. The NHL playoffs started last night. If you watch on YouTube or Spotify.com or the application on your mobile device, of course, you can see the Edmonton Oilers are a bit of a shit show. And <laughs> the playoffs are back. Stanley Cup playoffs are back. And the NBA playoffs rolled on last night. We'll get into all of that. Of course, uh, a good distraction for any of you who are looking to avoid the real world today for anything that may or may not be ruled on by the Supreme Court. And the internet is going to be a great cesspool of awesomeness today. So we'll talk about some sports we're going to start today with, of course, DeAndre Hopkins, who has no idea how steroids and illegal substances got into his bloodstream. It makes no sense to him. Let's read his official statement. This is incredible. In my 10-year NFL career, I have never tested positive for using performance-enhancing drugs. To learn that my November test came back with trace elements of a banned substance, I was confused and shocked. I am very mindful of what I put into my body, and I have always taken a holistic approach, so I am working with my team to investigate how this could have happened. But even as careful as I have been, clearly I wasn't careful enough. For that, I apologize to Cardinals fans, my teammates, and the entire Cardinals organization. I said organization. I said organization. Organization. Because it's hockey season. I never want to let my team down, continued Hopkins. <laughs> I fully intend to get to the bottom of this. As soon as I have any information, I will share it. Unbelievable how these guys just, people just putting shit into their bodies that makes them get suspended for week six. Or six... Six weeks? Yeah, he'll be back week seven. That's, it's just crazy to me how these people in, uh, are just shoving shit into a professional athletes' bodies. It happened to Golden Tate a couple of years ago. I we need to get to who is ruining these people's blood. These are professional athletes. <sighs> Dude, just say like fuck, I got caught. Just say it. Like just say it. Like you did it. Like we know you did it. You did it. Like it's science. <sighs> buddy. The NHL last night. Let's look at some highlights. Uh, first things first, check out this sick video from Carolina. Um, it's the pregame. Carolina hosting the Boston Bruins. That was the first game of the Stanley Cup playoffs. We also had a couple Canadian teams playing last night. Um, there were three ass weapons. One of them was close for a while. Actually, it was close for the vast majority of the game, and then the other ones were not as much. But let's just watch this Carolina thing. This is sick. Look at it. Oh, my God. I love them. They do that. It's a hand crank hurricane warning siren. So if I had to rank NHL fan bases in terms of, like, don't want to play there, this fan base has their shit together, like, during the Stanley Cup playoffs, number one is Nashville. In fact, number one is is Nashville for all sports in, in North America, for professional sports. College is a different level. Those guys are mean. Carolina in the NHL is probably two or three. Toronto's good um, for any of you Maple Leafs fans who may be listening. The problem with the Toronto fan base is that they turn on their team pretty quick. And uh, that's not... It's not the same thing as just blind loyalty. The the Canes are not booing, and they're not. I mean, it's just they're part of the team. What a uh, what a scene last night. Let's watch what happened in in uh, Edmonton, where they have not one but two of the greatest offensive players to be on the same team at the same time, like historically good guys in Leon Draisaitl and Connor McDavid. If you can get tickets to see Connor McDavid play live, you should, so you can tell people that you got to some point in your life. But they have the worst goaltending of all time. This person's name is Mike Smith. <laughs> Let's watch what he does. All right, so he dumps it in, and here's Mike Smith behind the net, and he's he's trying to play the puck. Good. This is good basic hockey. Okay, so he grabs it, and now he's like, he's just sitting in the pocket like a quarterback. Look at him. He's just like, oh, I want to go this way. I want to go that way. Like, you can't. You don't have all day, bro. So he's, he's, stick, he's stick handling, and then he just shoots it in the middle, like right back up the ice. Instead of going up the boards or dropping it back off, he just stands there for a full second, which in the NHL is an eternity, and then he rips it up the middle. And if you can see where I paused it, this guy is going to get the puck. And he is in between the hash marks, in between the circles. He is literally in the place where coaches tell you, if you get the puck here, you should shoot because you're probably going to score. And he is not looking, and then Mike Smith gets back in the net for a miraculous save. Look at him. Which is 
desperation. At that moment, the oh fuck that's going on in his brain, is it's happening so fast he can't say it out loud. So now let's just continue to watch this. Rebound. Look at Look how far out of position he is. Look what a mess this is. Get it to the top. And they score. That shot should not have gotten in. I think it was tipped. I don't remember. But all of this happened on a basic dump in. It's just hilarious when a team that's just pretty good or very good or has elite, like, Hall of Fame level talent, they just have, like, one or two weak links, and then that those weak links just uh, end up leading to hilarity for the rest of us. Regardless, the only close game of the night. Oh, by the way, um, the score at that time was 3-3 three to three with five minutes left in the third period. Five minutes left in the game, and that goal gave the Kings the lead they went on to win four to three that was the game winning goal yiggity yikes three ass weapons last night the uh St. Louis Blues they I don't know how they do it it's not even the same group of guys anymore they just always win on the road they're just not scared of anything and I want to give a shout out people are starting to kind of kind of, kind of realize it's happened Right in front of our eyes for the last 35 years, but now people are really starting to get on board of um, with th- this disaster that is Minnesota sports. They are the most cursed franchise or franchise fan base of all time. I was thinking to myself in the NHL, the NHL has such parity that every team has been pretty good or really good or at least had a really good run in the last. 25 years. So the Islanders were the second best team in the NHL last year, in my opinion. But they haven't made the Stanley Cup playoffs in forever. Other than that, only the Maple Leafs and the Wild, the two places where you would associate hockey the most, have not been to the Stanley Cup Finals. Florida Finals, Tampa, multiple cups. L.A. has won three cups. The the Ducks have won one. The Kings have won two. The Ducks have been to another Finals. The Sharks have been to the Finals. The Canucks, the Flames, the Oilers, the Avs were elite in the late 90s, early 2000s and are back to being elite. Vegas went to the finals in their first year. Carolina's been to the finals multiple times and won the Stanley Cup. Literally all of them. Columbus, I I digress. Columbus, you can add Columbus to that list. They suck too. But Minnesota, my God. Last night, Minnesota, they're a really trendy pick to win the Stanley Cup. A really great bet. We've been talking about that for months. They get their ass whipped by the Blues. Sucks to suck, don't tell you. So, the final score was yesterday. Hurricanes, they dominate the Bruins in what should be the overall best series. The game was at the, was the best game. The Kings and the Oilers game was a mess, but it was a close game. But Bruins and Hurricanes was close until about seven, ten minutes left in the third. It got to three to one, and then the Canes scored, and then they got an empty net goal. So, it wasn't as bad as five to one, but the ass weapons were the Leafs. Oh, my goodness. I told you guys, the Leafs. The, the Lightning just looked out of sorts. Um... Two-time Stanley Cup champions. You run out of gas, man. I don't, three-peating doesn't happen anymore. In, in the salary cap era, three-peating just doesn't happen. Mitch Marner scored a goal, which is a really big deal for Toronto fans. He just hasn't been very good in the playoffs. The goal that he scored was like, it was very pretty. I It sort of counts. It, it's three-quarters of counting. He he needs to score when it's 1-1 or 2-1 to one and they're down by a goal. Like He needs to score like a real goal. The real goal in this game was Austin Matthews just burying one, the best offensive player on the planet. And people are already starting to talk about him. I love this for Leaf fans. It's so interesting because it's such a historic f- franchise, but they've sucked so bad for so long. Is Austin Matthews like already a top five Maple Leaf of all time? Probably. All right, let's move on to the National Basketball Association where Devin Booker has been arrested and booked in prison um, for taunting someone on the Dallas Mavericks. That's a joke. He was not arrested. But he was given a technical foul for sassing the shit out of someone. And I am down with this being a technical foul in the regular season. I am down with this being a flag in football. Getting in someone's face, like this is a place of business. On a, on a random Thursday night with a, like a, a, a 45% capacity arena in Atlanta, if you did this, you'd be like, all right, you're a dick. Get the technical foul. Stop it. Same thing in the NFL, same thing in the NHL. Like, there's a time and a place. The time and the place is in the playoffs when your, your, your home fan base is, like, this close to just erupting. So let's watch the play. They got a tech. First of all, it's hilarious. So he says, taunting, it's the playoffs. Let's watch him get fussy about it. Taunting? What? It's the playoffs. It's the playoffs. So there's Luca. Luca drains it. Let's watch the play. This is what he got the penalty for. 
the taunting penalty, whatever. I can't keep my sports straight. Look at him. Get in his face. Whoa, motherfucker. Um, the regular season, 100%. 100%. Playoffs, <sighs> ugly, gross. Uh, the Suns win that game. The Phoenix Suns, Booker is trending back to actually being 100%. And the Phoenix Suns win that game. Because they're really good. They beat the Mavs 121 to 114. The Heat beat the Sixers. The Sixers were winning, leading into the fourth quarter. Remember, their best player, and I would say the best player on the planet right now, Joel Embiid, or at least the most important player on the planet, Joel Embiid did not play. And the Sixers damn near pulled it off. They just ran out of gas. They just don't have anybody. They missed a bunch of threes. Tyler Hero, that annoying little shit from Kentucky. (laughs) He's so good. Kentucky and Duke, they should have more national championships based on how their players play. Like, Hero's a Kentucky guy, right? So we got, like, Maxi. Hero, Booker, Carl Anthony Towns, and this this John Calipari man has won one national championship. Unbelievable! I can't. I literally can't get over that. Uh, association games tonight: Bucks, Celtics, Warriors, Grizz. Same schedule as last night. It's going to be exciting. This is so weird for the NHL playoffs to be getting ramped up while the NBA playoffs are completely around ahead. I don't know what to make of myself. NHL games tonight. We we'll take a look at the schedule. Uh, some cool atmospheres. We'll see what Florida does. I'm interested to see how Miami handles the playoffs. Uh, you know, now that like it's an expectation, and they've been there a couple times, and they're one of the best teams in the NHL. They've got a superstar coming into town, and Alexander Ovechkin, but the Caps aren't good, so it's just like a gimme. Uh, Penguins Rangers is going to be dynamic. New York has sucked at sports recently. It's been a long. It's been 11 years since the Giants won the Super Bowl. So I'm, I'm interested to see how they how they do it. The Avalanche. I think that Colorado is going to have an air of like. They're going to be tight because they're nervous. Stars and Flames, the Calgary is going to be lit up, so that's exciting. So we got uh, Penguins, Rangers, Caps, Panthers, Preds, Avs, Stars, Flames. Is that right? No, no, I have no gambling picks for you at this point in time on any of those games. Betting on the NHL is hot and cold. I kind of want to see how everyone, <clears throat> how everything pans out. You can kind of tell how the series is going to go based on like, the first couple of games. Like the, the Toronto series... I think Toronto's going to... Like, I'll give you an example. This is my prediction officially on Toronto. Toronto will never win a game that easy again in this series. And in fact, I think they're going to lose game two. It's just one of those things where sometimes goalies are leaky, sometimes it doesn't work. Steven Stamkos missed a one-timer on a wide open net. and He usually doesn't miss one-timers in general. Um, but Toronto's going to win. They're going to win the series in six. And it's, it's going to feel pretty comfortable. The vibe is going to be comfortable, I believe. For the most part. But I don't. I mean, I had to see the first game to kind of feel that out. It feels much more serious for Toronto. Okay, let's. Uh, how much time do we have here? Yeah, let's get out of here pretty quick. Couple quick notes. Um, what do I want to give you guys? Let's go with the Brian Flores lawsuit stuff. We'll go into that. Hugh Jackson alleged that the Browns incentivized uh, him to cheat. The United States. In the United States. <laughs> The NFL is alleging in their lawsuit that that is BS, and that's kind of came out as confirmed that it was BS, and that's just not going to be part of the lawsuit now, I think, is what, how this is going to work. Scott Frost at Nebraska has violated multiple coaches' rules. I don't know if he was, I don't know what he was doing, but could have fooled me. I, I, they're not very good, and we're going to get out of here on our king, Magic Johnson. The playoff teams that need to make trades and moves this summer are the Brooklyn Nets, the Utah Jazz, Atlanta Hawks, and Chicago Bulls. I say that's accurate. There's Rudy Gobert. A report Rudy Gobert will demand that either he or Donovan Mitchell be traded from the Jazz in the next few years because they hate each other. Remember, Rudy Gobert gave everyone COVID. When I say everyone, I mean like the country, sort of. Uh, never thought that Utah would be a mess. Crazy. Oh, good. Insurrection is trending. That's so much fun. Like, rate, review, subscribe. We'll be back in better than ever tomorrow.